The recent New England Journal of Medicine paper published the um, reporting the, uh, the finding on the clinical trial, gene therapy clinical trial using the mini dystrophin. So this is a collaboration between Jeremy and Dell's group and Joseph Moskin and our own group. And so the clinical finding is that the first is that the, uh, it's a very unexpected. Some patients, they already have pre-existing T cells that recognize their own um, revertent dystrophin. That means uh, they, it's like an auto autoimmune kind of a disease. You know, before gene therapy treatment, they already have the T cell existing. And uh, in one patient, actually, uh, the T cell uh, is newly developed to recognize one of the epitopes that's brought in by the uh, mini dystrophin. So that is uh, uh, directly related to gene transfer. But there are some other patients, you know, so they don't have uh, new epitope recognition, so that means uh, you know, the immunology is very complicated in a way that the uh, patient has pre-existing T cells, some patients they don't. One patient developed the T cells recognize the transient product, so this makes the whole story very complicated. You know, it's uh, totally unexpected because uh, previously we thought that the, the revertent fibers will establish a tolerance and so it will not launch uh, T cell re immune response against the transgene because they share the same epitopes. This finding uh, raised a few questions at the clinical trial. One is the selection of uh, patients, and some patients, they, if they already have the pre existing T cells, and you know, we have to be careful with them. And another question is uh, the gene vector design itself. And because uh, recently there are some new serotypes and, uh, that can evade immune systems more effectively than the ones we used in clinical trial. And in fact, the AAV1 clinical trial using uh, sarcoglycan, and they don't, uh, in the alpha sarcoglycan clinical trial, and there were six patients who were conducted by, uh, a clinical trial were conducted by Jerry Mandel, and the five of them had a long-term gene transfer you know, without uh, recognizable T cell immune response against the transgene, so those are, uh, very successful, and I, I think that's boils down to the transgene itself and also the vector design. Another important thing is the promoter. You know, so in the the Shofin clinical trial, we use the non-specific CMB promoter, so that promoter can uh, make the transgene to express in uh, antigen-presenting cells in other non-muscle cells. And mm -hmm. but in the sarcoglycan trial, they use the, a muscle-specific promoter that. Uh, is developed in my, in my own lab, and that is very specific uh, uh, to express the gene in the muscle. So that may have potentially reduced the non-specific gene expression in non-muscle cells, such as uh, antigen-presenting cells. What's the status of the use of mini dystrophin because of the size of AEV to accommodate a very large gene, like 14 kilobases? <laughs> yeah, yeah, so <coughs> you know, we, so we started this project many years ago, and you know, so dystrophin is the largest gene, and so uh, now it's uh, in general the size can be reduced to one third. It retain I would say about ninety percent or eighty percent of the original function that's connecting the cytoskeletal structure and the muscle membrane. So stabilize the muscle membrane, also restore the dystrophin social protein complex. And there are some recent uh, tweaks and improvement. And for example, uh, Dongshan Dance Group and they use the different. Uh, internal rod binding site that can uh, also bind to the NLOS, and uh, NLOS is, is a molecule that can increase uh, blood vessel dilation. And uh, um, uh, George Dixon's lab, and they recently added a, a small piece of a C-terminus back to the micro and that can increase slightly the muscle contractor force. So those are um, uh, incremental changes, and uh, it may improve the uh, the overall function of the mini dystrophin, but uh, there are so many versions out there, and basically they all work pretty well in small animals and large animals. What's your experience, your recent experience in treating a dystrophin disease in dogs? Yeah, so, uh, you know, um, mm -hmm. mouse is a mouse, and it's very small, and it's basically, um, and also the mouse is not as sick, and so the large animal, the golden retriever muscular dystrophy dog, they they mimic all the clinical um, symptoms and the pathology seen in the human patients, and you know they they become very sick and um, and uh, they have all sorts of uh, um, pathology, and it's it's challenging to treat those dogs because uh, they're a thousand times larger than mice, and you need a 
more virus, and then their immune system is more complicated because of the out threat, and uh, um, and, and and also uh, they are very costly. But however, we have overcome some of those problems, and we use the AAV line to uh, deliver the mini dystrophin gene. That's the exact gene we use the, in the human clinical trial. That's a human gene uh, carry the uh, encoding the human protein, and so when we did uh, uh, either. Uh, through the limb perfusion, uh, through the uh, lag vein, we we'll just do a pure IV injection without any intervention. Um, the mini dystrophin actually ex expressed all over the body. In the limb perfusion study, it expressed in the perfused lag, but also expressed in the non perfused lag, suggesting that the AAV9 somehow escaped into the circulation and uh, infected or did a gene transfer in other. Uh, muscle groups, and so uh, for the pure IV injection, we have gene expression all over the body, in the diaphragm, in the heart, in the uh, limb muscles, and everywhere. And actually, the gene expression in liver is non-detectable, and also gene copy number is very low in in the liver. We don't know why. And there are quite a few dogs, and we found out that the gene copy number in the liver actually is lower than in the muscle, suggesting that the, you know the the in vivo tropism for AAV. You know, maybe different in, in large animal and in small animal. You know, in mice, and if you inject AAV9, then you have 90% of the virus end up in the liver, and uh, liver copy number is going to be very, very high in the tens, even over 100 copy numbers. And in the dogs, we found it's less than one copy or less than mm -hmm. ha half copy or even lower. So, um, uh, so that that brings up an issue, which is uh, I know the field is marching forward in terms of developing uh, viruses which have a specificity for different tissues, uh, and in particular trying to target the heart. What's, what's been your experience with using these recombinant AAVs? Yeah, that's a very good point. And, you know, because uh, the other serotypes, you know, the natural serotypes, and um, they all have a very high uh, tropism to the liver, no matter what kind of serotype. And, uh, but certain serotypes like AAV7, 8, and 9, they can uh, target liver, uh, target heart more efficiently when you do systemic delivery, and the other serotypes like AAV1 and AAV6, and if you do a direct intramyocardial injection, they actually infect the muscle cells, cardiac muscle cells much better. Mm. Uh, but for global treatment for the uh, heart disease, you, you you probably need uh, to use the uh, intravascular injection and let the virus seek out the, the heart tissue and the, right. the gene transfer, and so. Uh, in small animal studies, and you know those uh, uh, recombinant DNA shuffled AAV or point mutation or by artificial design, and those AAV can increase their specificity to the heart and reduce the non-specificity to the liver, detargeted to the liver and not detargeted the pancreas. But all the studies were done in mice, and the, so they, they have never been tested in large animals. Mm -hmm. Probably the next step will be. So, uh, final question is, what, what do you project in terms of uh, clinical trials in humans with new viruses or uh, improved mini dystrophin genes? Yeah, I, I think, you know, the clinical trial will come back. And although the first clinical trial, it's sort of a, I, I see it as a, a, as a slight setback because, uh, you know, the, the new finding on immunology. But uh, uh, on the other hand, the large animal studies are very encouraging and there are also other clinical trials using immuno uh, intervention. If that's the last resort, if uh, uh, the immune, immunology issue cannot be resolved on its own, then you know we can always use uh, immune intervention. I think the clinical trial will come back because uh, there is no still there is no good treatment for Duchenne muscular dystrophy.